Everybody right now has dreams, don't they, guys? All right, everybody in the NFL, I have a dream of making it in the NFL. I got a dream of winning a Super Bowl. I got a dream of being in a Pro Bowl. I'm really not into dreams anymore, okay? I'm into fucking nightmares. You guys with me on that? Mosh pit. You got to end somebody's dream. You got to take their job. You got to take their heart. Are you guys clear about this NFL shit now? We're not trying to go to the Peach Bowl. We're not trying to go to the Gator Bowl or the Blue Bonnet Bowl. We're trying to go to the Super Bowl. The autumn wind is a pirate. Blustering in from sea, with a rollicking song, he sweeps along, swaggering boisterously. The autumn wind is a raider, pillaging just for fun. He'll knock you round and upside down, and laugh when he's conquered and won. Just win, baby. Ah! I love it. You know, I sit in my office and I just shake. I get so excited. <laughs> what is good, Raider Nation? Welcome back to the Raiders Hub. First off, I want to say thank you to all you guys for making this YouTube ride so much fun so far. Uh, big thank you to all my subscribers. If you guys haven't subbed yet, I'd really appreciate it. We're on the road to 2K. And it's a big milestone for me, man. I, you know, 1K feels like it just happened yesterday and we're already almost at 2. So, you know, I'm so stoked. I can't thank you guys enough. And I hope you guys are all staying safe during these uncertain times. We got some stories to cover today. We got one really big story to cover. And we'll get into that in a bit. But uh, let's jump into the first piece of news. Raiders are paying some respect to the Raider legends uh, at practice this morning. I love that Gruden wants to keep the Raider tradition alive and you know we saw it earlier in practice with uh, Derek Carr rocking the Stabler jersey. Now we got some members of the offense rocking um, the names and numbers of some Raider greats that played their position. You guys can see it there on the screen some of the notable names that were honored at practice this morning. I think this is such a cool idea and I hope that you know this becomes a tradition for us in training camp to look back and honor the ones that came before the guys that are playing now, the ones that really paved the way for Raider Nation. Alec Ingold said it was really cool to get to exemplify what the Raiders have been in the past and hopefully bring some of that legendary success into the future. And exactly what I said, man. We got to honor those that came before the Raiders that we have now and also hope that these young guys can turn this team into a championship team and become legends in their own rights. So earlier in the year, I put out a video predicting what I think the defense would look like going to game one. I had... Um, I had a Mukamara starting, and the biggest reason for that was because I didn't really know what training camp was going to look like with the virus and you know everything that's been going on. So I kind of figured it would be pretty limited. But now that we see that we're pretty much up to full speed in training camp and everything is going pretty smoothly, we see Damon Arnett really battling. And you know this is something that I expected would happen if he got the chance. I think Damon Arnett is very talented, and I think he's going to earn himself a starting job. And if he does earn that starting job, it'll be validation for his first round tender. It'll, you know, prove to people who doubted him that he's capable of being a starting corner in this league. And if he does get that shot, man, I think he's going to shine. If you haven't checked out his mic'd up segments from training camp, go check it out. This dude's got awesome energy. He's really funny. Um, and I'm pulling for the dude. All right, let's jump into some transaction news. Raiders added veteran defensive end Chris Smith to a one year deal. This dude started two games since he came into the league in 2014. He's played in 60. Um, not too impressive. His best play is in the run game. He's only got eight and a half sacks to his career, so I think it's just another camp move. I don't see this guy making the team. The Raiders also added a linebacker and a running back to replace the ones that they let go. Bryce Hager is gone, and so is running back William Stanbeck, who I didn't even know we had, to be honest with you. So those guys are gone. We're bringing in. Theo Riddick and Kyle Emanuel comes out of retirement to come and try to earn a spot on this team. Um, if any of these guys that we've added as of late has a chance, I think it might be Emanuel. I think he's a, he was a decent player. And, um, you know, I think we do need some depth at linebacker. So the dude's also still pretty young. He came into the league in 2015 and, you know, had a decent career. It, nothing special, but he did start 32 games for the Chargers. So I do think that. Kyle Emanuel does have a shot more than Theo Riddick does. Riddick hasn't done much, and he's been around for quite a while now. 
Um, most of his success has been in the passing game. He has like twice the amount of yards in the in, in the passing game that he does in, in rushing yards. So um, the signing of him kind of does tell me that Devontae Booker maybe isn't the guy who we thought he was or isn't really panning out. So we're bringing in more guys to see what's up. We've had a ton of running backs come in this camp. So, you know, I don't know what Gruden and Mayark are looking for. I think we're good with the three that we have. And especially Theo Riddick is, you know, a, a Walmart version of Jalen Richard, in my opinion. So I don't know, man. Well, I, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I, I don't I don't see him making the team, though. The only thing that comes to mind with this rotation of running backs that we're bringing in is that Gruden sees um, Bowden as more of a guy that as a rotational piece can jump around the field. He doesn't really see him as a true running back. And I have seen reports that he's not really doing too well in pass pro. So maybe um, Gruden's looking for a more traditional third running back and he's going to use uh, Bowden as kind of like a, a wild card player. All right, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of today's video. Tyrell Williams, another injury, man. This is so disappointing. We saw what he could do last year when he was healthy. And then when he had the foot issue, we could just tell it wasn't the same, man. And um, now he's got a torn labrum, the same thing that put Abram on the sideline for the for the whole year last year. Now, apparently he's going to try to play through the injury. But like I said, this is the type of injury that sets a guy back a whole year. We've seen Williams play through injury before. He did it back in 2017, and he did it for us last year. So he's a tough guy. I, you know, I don't want to knock him or anything. Um, but we did see his production slow down. I think we saw him a bit in his head. He was dropping some footballs for us last year and just wasn't the same guy as he was early in the year. And, you know, I see this affecting him. I don't know. I'm just just disappointed because, you know, we got him on a four-year deal. And this guy could be a, a really good asset for us. Um, if it means anything, maybe it means the emergence of Brian Edwards this year more than you know, we initially thought um, so far reports out of camp are stellar for Edwards and um, I'm one of the guys pulling for him. You know, I always said that the only the only way I see Edwards becoming a true starter this year is if Williams goes down with an injury and, you know, maybe I should have knocked on wood because I mean, that situation is unfolding right in front of us. If I had to give my opinion, I think this injury is going to result in surgery, which is going to be, you know, out for the year type deal for Williams. And then he'll be moving into his third year of contract with us. And especially with the injuries, it's like, you know, if Brian Edwards comes out of his shell and really balls out this year, Tyrell would be a guy that we could look to move. But, you know, his value is just dropping and dropping every time he gets hurt. You know, he possibly could have got, you know, a second or a third round pick for him maybe. The more he gets hurt, the more that value drops. So, like I said, I'm disappointed in this, man. Um, but gonna have to wait to see how it plays out if we can pull any any positive out of this it's that we're gonna get to see brian edwards in a bigger role this year and i am definitely excited for that because i think brian edwards is that dude he's you know that that prototypical like big receiver that can you know be a possession type guy uh be a red zone threat i said it before i think he could end up leading the team in touchdown catches and if he has a bigger role i think it's definitely gonna be him I see like a, a car Crabtree 2016 type of connection between these two. Um, so let's wait and see what happens. Um, you know, thoughts go out to Tyrell Williams, man. I'm I said, can't, can't say it enough. Disappointed. Uh, and I'm sure he is too. Uh, I know he wants to earn his contract and I know he doesn't want to be playing hurt. So thoughts go out to him, man. So I saved this story for last because I know it's going to piss some of you guys off. Um, frankly, Anybody who's in my comments talking about Mariota is that dude. Mariota's gonna, you know, be the truth. He's gonna take Carr's job. Y'all are smoking some stuff, and you know, I want to get my hands on it because y'all are crazy. Um, he does not hold a candle to Derek Carr, in my opinion. And um, you know, this whole debate uh, about Derek Carr and Raider Nation, in my opinion, is a little crazy. And you know, Colin Coward had some stuff to say, and. You know, I like what he said. I agree with him. I've mentioned this before. Point me to a quarterback who has more change in the front office, in the coaching staff, in his, you know, in his position players. Show me a quarterback who has had that much change and had as much success as Derek Carr has, and, and I'll shut up. But you can't do it. There's no other player that's gone through this. He's had to battle so much adversity, and still, 
puts up numbers, man. The dude puts up numbers, and you can't you, you can't argue it. The only thing that people can say is, oh yeah, Carr's check down, man. You know his 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 yards per attempt are 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 the lowest in the league. Whatever. While that argument might be kind of valid, he's also been ranked as one of the the best deep ball throwers in the NFL over the last you know three or four years of his career. So in my opinion, the the check down Charlie argument doesn't really mean much to me because we know that the guy can sling it if he's got the weapons to do it. In this little segment that Coward does, um, he compares Carr's passer rating, completion percentage, and touchdown to interception ratio to some other notable quarterbacks. Um, Go check it out. Go look it up. He compares them to uh, Andrew Luck. He's got better numbers than Andrew Luck. He's got pretty comparable numbers to Phillip Rivers. He's got pretty comparable numbers to Matt Ryan. And he's got better numbers than Matt Stafford. And Matt Stafford would be the only other guy in this league that I could point to and say, okay, yeah, that dude's had some, some, you know, issues with the front office and his coaching staff, but also the dude had Calvin Johnson. And he's also got Kenny Galladay and Marvin Jones Jr. He's got, he's had weapons throughout his career. And dude was the first overall pick, man. Like, I'm tired of it. Give Derek Carr this year, and then we'll see. It's third year in a system. He's got some talent around him. Got a good O-line. This is the year. And I'm in no way a Carr stan. I'm not a Kardashian. Uh, I think he's good. I don't think he's amazing. But I think he's better than what people give him credit for. And that's that, man. I'm, I'm done with the Derek Carr conversation until the end of the year or until mid-year when he either proves us right or proves us wrong. But for now, man, that's all I got. As always, peace out. Much love, Raider Nation. I'll catch you next time.